Here are two parabolas. We're, we're, today we're going to learn to write equations for parabolas. Now the, the, uh, the goal today is to write an equation for each parabola in the picture to the right. So how many parabolas are there? Two. Two. So how many equations do I have to write? Two. Two. So the goal is to write an equation for these parabolas. And then once we have that equation written, we should be able to plug it in our calculator and get, you know, need, and get a parabola that looks exactly the same. Okay. Alright, does that make sense? Yeah. Jamira, can you go back to the point? Well, no, if you got something, you got orange juice in your eye. Oh, no, I'm good. Okay. Alright, so any questions about what the goal for today is? Any questions? So we want to write an equation for those two parameters. Right. Now, you guys have looked at these parameters before. You know, Nick, stop talking. There was a little review activity we did where we need to point out the x-intercepts and the maximum or minimums, right? You guys remember doing that? No. Okay, we did it last Thursday. Okay. If you were not here at the front side of this paper, you might want to try that on your own. Not right now. Tonight. You're not texting Eric. Okay, try it on your own. What? You're taking a test? Okay, so you're going to try it on your own. All right. So here I have two graphs. I have a, a solid graph and a dashed graph. On the solid graph, what are my x-intercepts? Right there. Okay, it's negative 5 comma what? Zero. zero. <laughs> and what? Seven zero. So those Why are the x-intercepts. Because the y the, the y axis is this one that has the numbers by it. Yeah, do that. Kind of blends in a little bit. So the x-axis is that whole one, and you can see that one. But that green one is the y-axis. So if we count from there, we can get, we can get negative 5 and 7. Does that make sense now? Okay, so any questions about how we got those numbers? Okay, now does this graph have a maximum or a minimum value? It's a minimum. Okay, what's the what's the ordered pair for this minimum? One, negative six, right? One, negative six, right? And we know it's one because if I draw that line, it goes through one right there, right? Does that make sense? Now, I don't need to draw that line, but I think that line's kind of cool, and we'll talk about it here in a little bit. But those are the x-intercepts and the minimum, right? Any questions about the x-intercepts and the minimum? Any questions? Now, there was a question on Thursday I asked you to take a look at over the weekend and take a look at when you were done with the, the review part. And that question was, is there a relationship between these two x values for the intercepts and that x value for the minimum? Yeah. Is there a relationship? Yeah. Okay. What is that relationship? It was, wasn't it double the size? What's double the size? The, well, no, it's, like it's, it's even on both sides. Ah, it's even on both sides, right? Yeah. So over here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? Over here, oh, I caught this guy. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six units on this side, right? And we have one, two, three, four, five, six units on this side, right? So we have six units on either side of the minimum to get to our x intercepts. Does that make sense? So we could say that this minimum is what for this line? Okay. So this is like the halfway point. Thanks, nice, Faith. So that, line, that, that spot right there is like the halfway point of that black line I just drew, isn't it? So the minimum is halfway between the... Close X. Close. Gives <laughs> an I. Intercepts. Intercepts, good. So maybe that's something I'll write down at the top of your page, in the top right corner. Right down, and is it just the minimum, or does it work for the maximum, too? It works for both. Okay, both. Because if we look, here's our maximum points. Right, this one has a maximum, doesn't it? One, two, one, two. Okay, it cuts in half again, doesn't it? Okay, so for max or min is halfway between the x intercepts. Right? Max or min is halfway between the x intercepts. So 
if you couldn't see the men automatically, it was like put on by the gas, would you still pick out the um, men on the Yes, you could. Well, how is, if you don't know the depth, though? Right. But once we know an equation, could we figure out the depth? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So right now we could. So the graph cut off right here, right? We could figure out the x coordinate of the minimum or maximum, right? We couldn't find the y coordinate. But once you figure out how to make equations, which is what we're doing today, then you can figure out the y coordinate. Any other questions? Any questions? Anybody? Does this seem to make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, how could we find this x value? How can I find this x value? Do I always have to just draw a picture and count? Because this, this, this x value, sorry, there should be a little more specific. How can I find the x value of our minimum? Or, in this case, it's the same one, the x value of our maximum. How can we find those? Well, we find the midpoint and that mark up the um, space in between the two, pieces. So find the midpoint of this line? Yeah. How do I find the midpoint? Everybody remember the midpoint equation? I said without counting, you're close. What is it, China? It is divided by two. Do I add the two or do I subtract the two? You add the two. We add the two because it's just like finding an average, right? Remember, if I have two points, the middle is the average, right? So I add these two together and then divide by two. So if I add these together, negative 5 plus 7, and divide by 2, what do we get? Let's try it out. Negative 5 plus 7, divide by 2, what do we get? What do we get? 1. Okay. So hold on to that equation, adding intercepts together, divide by 1, because that will help us with this next part before we go on. Okay. And we'll come back and practice this a little bit more. So... The next thing we're going to do is we're going to examine what each of these mean in this equation, what the A, what the M, what the N mean in the equation, and then we're going to start writing, writing equations. Right? So, it's always funny how the picture looks when you, when you turn the graph off. Sure. Reaching out to the in middle. Alright. Give me a hall pass and get back. Hold on. Alright. Alright. So, Here's the same equation we had on the slide, right? A times x minus m times x minus n. Okay? Same equation you guys have written on your paper. Right? So this equation is what's called the factored form for a parabola. The reason why it's the factored form is we have two factors. Now I say like the factors of 8, you guys know what I mean? What are some factors of 8? What are some factors of 8? Four. 4 and 2, right? Because those are the numbers you multiply together to get the number, right? So this is the factored form of a parabola. These are the things we multiply together to get the parabola equation. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So on this equation, each letter plays an important role. Now we just looked at an equation looks like this. You don't need to draw this because you have plenty of parabolas on your paper. What if you want to draw me, Ken? All right. We had two parabolas that look like that, right? Now I know you guys have studied parabolas before in other classes. One of these parabolas opens up, one opens down, right? Which one opens up? The solid one. The solid one. Which one opens down? The dashed one. Now which of these letters do you guys think controls the opening up or the opening down? Nope. X and Y are variables, right? Independent, dependent. The other ones are constants. A, M, and N are constants. Which letter A, M, or N controls the opening up or opening down? Nope. A does. Faith, you're going to say the negative what? Okay. Because you're used to looking at parabolas that look like this y equals 3x squared plus 2, or y equals negative 4x squared minus 1, right? You guys were used to parabolas like that in the previous class, weren't you? Right? Does this one open up or open down? 
Opens up, right? Does this one open up or open down? Down. down. Because the number in front is? Negative. Negative. The number in front is? Positive. Positive. So the number that controls the opening up or opening down is which one? The one in front. The one in front, which is which letter? A. A. So on your paper you have A. You can write plus sign means parabola. Oops. Almost forgot. Opens. Opens up. Hey, let's draw a little parabola picture if you want to. If you think you need to. Right? Minus sign means what? Parabola opens down. Parabola opens down. Now there's plenty of cute little names that people give these. They call the one that opens up a cereal bowl or a U. They call the one that opens down an umbrella or an N. I just call them parabolas. Matt is cool, I guess. All right. Any questions? Does that make sense? Now, will this parabola have a minimum or maximum? Um, that will have a minimum. Good. The one that opens up has a minimum. minimum. The range is every number bigger than something, right? Right? Does this parabola have a minimum or maximum? Maximum. maximum. It's every number. The range is every number less than something, right? Right? Does that make sense? Maximum highest point, minimum is the lowest point. If you need to write that down, then write that down. Maybe put a little dot here and say min. Put a little dot here and write max. Okay. What? Yes, those both go for A. I know there's not a ton of space for A, um, but I think you can get both those to fit there. There's one more thing for A, and I think I think Faith is doing a great job here at the notes. If you write it over here just to the right of it, you should have enough room. Okay? And that question is, the question when asked, is how will A affect the width of the parabola? If A is a big number, will the parabola increase faster or slower? Slower. A is a big number, will the parabola increase faster or slower? Well, right here, A is going to have a big effect on the y value, right? Right? So if a, a and Y have a direct relationship, don't they? So if A goes up, what happens to Y? It goes direct. Uh, if A increases, Y increases, right? So if A is a big number, will our parabola increase faster or slower? Faster. faster. The Y value will increase faster. So if I have two, and you don't need to draw this. I'll just erase it here in a second. If I have two parabolas, so here's one. Here's the other one. Okay. Which one is increasing faster? The one, this one or this one? The one on the inside or the one on the outside? Inside, inside increases faster, right? You guys see that? Okay. That's because its A value is bigger. Okay. Larger A values make narrower parabolas. So larger A equals narrow. Go steeper if you want to. But your notes, what makes sense for you is what's important. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, any questions about A? Any questions about A? So if A controls opening up or opening down, controls how narrow or steep the parabola is, then what's left for M and N? Where's the x and the y? Slope. Not slope. What are we saying, Faith? Are they like the what? The x and the y. Not x and y's. The x intercepts? They're just the x intercepts. There's two m and n's, right? Okay. Right? m and n are pretty much interchangeable here, aren't they? Couldn't I switch them and it really wouldn't change my equation that much? Yeah. Yeah. That's because m and n are the two x intercepts. Okay? So M and N are each an x-intercept. They're each an x-intercept. And 
And when you plug them into the equation, do not change the sign. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. When I plug in a negative for m, okay, don't just write that number. So like if m is negative 5, don't just write 5 here because it's already minus. Yeah. You need to write minus a negative 5. Yeah. Okay? If m is, is 1, positive 1, don't write x plus 1. Okay? The number, so the, the sign in the equation is actually opposite of the x value. So what I mean by that is if m, this is x minus 5, that means the intercept is at positive 5. Okay? If it's x minus 2, that means the intercept is at positive 2. Okay? If it's x plus 1, that means the intercept is at negative 1. Okay? It's kind of like the, the, the circle equation. Remember with h and k in our circle equation? We plugged them in as they were that number because when the sign was positive, that really meant the, the center was at a negative number. Okay, it's kind of the same idea. Right? So you need to plug them in with the sign they're given on the graph. And then you can simplify and make a, make a plus sign if you need to. But if, if, this, if this intercept right here is positive 5, then it needs to be x minus 5. If it's not x minus 5, then that'll be it. It'll, it'll have this intercept over here. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, does that make sense? And I'll show you what I mean as we go through the example. So here's the, the gist of that equation. So the cool thing about this is if we know the intercepts, we can just plug them right in. It's easy. Okay. The toughest part of this is going to be finding the a value. Okay. That'll be the toughest part. And that's what we'll have to do here in a moment. Now, if you look over on the, on the, uh, on the right side of your page, there's a part where it says equation for finding the x value of the max and min, right? So x value of the max and min. Right? Can you guys find that part? You guys find that part? Now, what did we say you had to do? We said that the, we said that the x value of the max or min was the midpoint of the intercepts, right? It was right in the middle of the intercept. So if these are my intercepts, right here in the middle is the max or min, isn't it? Right, guys? So what was that midpoint equation again? Good. So the x value of the min or max will be equal to, now we said x plus x, right? Now those are for the intercepts, aren't they? M plus n. Yep, so we're going to use m plus n instead. So it's m plus n divided by 2. m plus n divided by 2. So you guys remember this graph? Negative 5, 7, the minimum is at 1, right? You guys remember that? Let's see if that works with our equation. What's m here? Negative 5, what's n? 7. Does it matter which one's which? No. Okay. So we said m was negative 5, we said n was 7. Or the, or the other way works fine. Okay. We said the answer was 1. Right? So m is negative 5, n is 7. So let's plug in this equation. Negative 5 plus 7 divided by 2. Are the parentheses important? The parentheses important? Yeah. Okay. If you just type negative 5 plus 7 divided by 2, you're going to get, you're going to get like 1.5. Okay? So the calculator does 7 divided by 2, then it adds it to negative 5. We need to do the top first. Negative 5 plus 7 is what? 2. 2 over 2 is? 1. Okay. Yes, Long? They're both x intercepts. Okay? All right. Any other questions? Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Now, for what we're doing today, what we're doing today, 
Finding the value of the max or min is not incredibly important with this equation. Finding on the graph is what we'll be doing. But later on, I might give you a problem where I say, hey, the x-intercepts are this and this. What's the value? Where, where's, the, where's the max or min? And you guys have to find it. Okay? Or like Faith said earlier, what if we have a parabola where half, where half the parabola is cut off? We just have the intercepts. Right? Can you find the, the location of the max or min? And the answer is yes, and we'll be using that equation. So um, it's an important equation. I just want to leave it because I thought it flowed easily from what we were talking about. Right? You guys want to practice a couple of those, or do you think you got it? Let's practice one or two. Okay. I think practice is a good idea. We'll pick this one. What's that, Arthur? This one. This one. Okay. Solid line, what are the intercepts? Eight, zero. Is it positive or negative? Negative. So we have negative eight and zero, right? Does it matter which one's M or N? No. No. So if I want to find the x coordinate of this one right here, I know some of you saying, well, easy, I just count. But think about this as a situation you don't have the graph or you can't read the graph. All right, Naya? Okay. You don't have the graph or you can't read the graph. Okay, you just know the intercepts. So negative 8 and 0. So we do negative 8 plus 0 divided by 2. What's negative 8 plus 0? Negative 8. What's negative 8 divided by 2? Negative 4. This is negative 4. And if I look, yep, 1, 2, th or 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4. Does that make sense? Make sense? Okay. Thank you guys. Try this one. This is 1. That's 9. So why don't you guys try that one? Nope, that's not it. Okay. So the way we could later on find out the, the y value here is we need the equation. And you can plug negative 4 into the equation and get the y value. Okay. Like, so you don't plug into the equation? Nope. You just plug in the two values? We'll learn how to find a here in a second. Well, Mr. Rich. Okay. Yes. Is the one negative? It's positive, right? The one is positive. Okay, so we know this, we have 1 plus 9, right? Over 2, what's 1 plus 9? 10. So it's 10 over 2, which is? 5. But there's 4 to 2. It's 4 from each, right? But that point right there is 5. It's finding the actual x value. It's not finding how far it is away, it's finding the x value. Oh. We don't know how far it was away, we just did the distance from it divided by 2. Right? But it's actually finding the x value. That's why I said it's an average. The average of 9 and 1 is 5. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right. Let's make some equations now. Sounds wonderful. I'm excited about it. making equations. Oh, my goodness. I'm clicking the zoom in button on the uh, on the screen where I'm recording. Like, why is it not zooming in? Oh goodness! You guys can laugh at me later. Don't laugh at me. Oh my gosh! <laughs> the two spots I click are the worst two spots on here. All right, so we're going to make an equation, right? Now, I know we already looked at this one. Let's look at just one parabola, though. Which one do you guys want to look at? The, the dashed line or the solid line? Dashed? OK, dashed for the first one I heard. Who else said solid? I'm sorry. We'll, we'll do solid next, OK? So you just had to wait with some, some, 
some anxious anticipation. All right. All right. So dash line. Where are my x intercepts? Good. Negative one and three. So I know right away that those are what values? M and N. M and N. So we know that M can be negative one and N can be three. Does that make sense? Okay. It's right there. The, the move up, move up. Yep, move up to the middle of the page. See where it says solid and dashed. Nope, move up. Oh. Right there, we're doing the dash one. Wow. Okay, so we're on the middle of that, of that front page by the one graph where it says solid and dashed, or right where it says dashed. Okay, so m is negative 1, n is 3. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I have the equation y equals a times x minus m times x minus n, I know m and n are negative 1 and 3. Does it matter which one goes where? No. Okay. I could just as easily say this was n and that was n. Okay. It doesn't matter. All right. But when I plug them in, this is what I said earlier. Make sure you don't change the sign when you plug them in. I'm going to plug in negative one for m, so it's s x minus negative one and x minus three. So I plug in for m and n. Does that make sense, guys? Now, what's minus a negative? The positive, right? So there's our equation as far as I could take it right now. Remember how, how earlier I said the values were the opposite of what they looked like in the equation? Yeah. Plus 1, minus 1. Minus 3, positive 3. Does that make sense? It needs to be like that. If it's not like that, then the equation's messed up. If you, if you have minus 1 here and plus 3 here, then this will actually be switched the other way. Well, would that matter? Yes, it would. Because it'd cross here. And cross here. Okay, so it would look different. It's like I took this problem and I slipped that. I translated to the word from earlier. Why did, the, um, why did that one stay the same? Which one? The x minus 3. Because it, it's a positive 3. So when I plug in positive 3 for n, it doesn't change the sign. Oh, okay. When I plug in negative 1 for m, it oh. changed the sign. Now, can I plug this into my, into my calculator and find an equation that looks just like this dash line? Can I plug that in and get an equation that looks just like the dashed line? Get a graph? No, because you can't figure out the e. The n. Okay. We don't know the a, do we? No. Oh, I need it back. If I plug this into my calculator, your calculator has a value stored for a already. It will give you a parabola. It just won't be this parabola. Okay, long, well, pay attention. All right? So we need to find that a. So how can I find that a? So I look at my equation, I have one, two, three unknowns, because these two x's are the same. So one, two, three unknowns. Can I solve an equation using three unknowns? No. no. Is there any place where I have a collection of x's and y's that will make this equation true? Yes. The table, but I need a graph, I need an equation to make the table, don't I? Is there any place where I have a collection of x's and y's that make that equation too? true? Yeah. Yeah, where is it, Long? Oh. Hopefully you knew. Was it your unique? What did you say? Everywhere on the graph, right? Anywhere on this dashed line is a point that makes this equation true. Right? If we zoomed in really far on this graph, we'd see a bunch of little dots signifying little points. Right? Those dots would all overlap. That's why I get a line. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? So if I know a point on this graph, then what can we find? A. Hey. Hey, if I know the maximum, we can find A. If I know the y-intercept, we can find A. Okay. Can I use the x-intercepts? No. No. no, we can't use the x-intercepts. The reason why we cannot use the x-intercepts, if I plug in negative 1 for x, right? Negative 1 plus 1 is? 0. zero. So I'll end up with A times 0 um, minus 2. What does that all equal? Zero. What happened to the A? It went away, didn't it? Okay. Same thing if I plug in 3 for x. 3, three minus 3 is what? Zero. zero. Right? So I end up with 0 times 4. What does that equal? 0 times A. What does that equal? 
Zero. So if I use my x-intercepts, that will get rid of my a. I don't want that. I want to find a. So you can use any point except the x-intercepts. Okay. So which point do we want to use? Maximum. Maximum? Okay, sounds like a great idea. The maximum we know, because it's halfway between these two, right? Right? 3 plus negative 1 is 2. 2 divided by 1 is? 1. Well, I wish this had 3 plus negative 1. It equals 1, right? Right? We know this point's at 1, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to use this point, 1, comma, 4. Does that make sense, guys? I can use any good point I find. I could use this point right here. Okay? Negative 2, negative 5. Right? I could use this point right here, which is 1, 2, 3, 0, 3. Okay? Any point works. Doesn't have to be the maximum or minimum. Any point works. Y intercept, anything. It all works. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So, click the graph away so we're not confused during our algebra. So now 1, 4 is just any point, isn't it? We know it's the maximum because we remember, but it's really just any point. All right, Maddie? So I plug 1 in for which letter? X. We plug in 4 for which letter? X. Y. X comma Y, right? Oh, yeah. 1 for X, 4 for Y. So we get this. 4 equals A times 1 plus 1, times 1 minus 3. It looks difficult, but it got really easy there, didn't it? What's 1 plus 1? 2. 2, because we got to do the parentheses first, right? So A times 2, 1 minus 3? Negative 2. Negative 2. Y equals 4. A times 2 times negative 2. What's 2 times negative 2? It's not zero. We're not adding. You have a calculator right there. What is it? Negative four. <laughs> now what do we do? Divide, Divide by negative. negative four. And if someone says this is too much, I'm going to be a little upset, a little frustrated. Well, that just means multiply. Okay. So now these cancel out. And what does A equal? One. Negative one. So long. What that means is our equation, and you can try this out, is y equals negative 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 3. Okay. So that's our equation. y equals negative 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 3. And you know what you can do? Anybody have an idea what we can do next? Plug it into your calculator. Make sure your window is correct, though. So when I say make sure your window correct is correct, hit Zoom 6, and then I'll take you back to the, to the 10 by 10 window, which is what I used to make the graph that you saw on, on, the, on, the, power, on the PowerPoint, or on the Prezi. It's called the PowerPoint. So we're just right? finding A. We did all that to find A. We did all that to find A. Now, was it really that difficult, though? No. Yes. We, I mean, we had to find the x-intercepts. We had to find a point on the graph. We plugged them in and got a really easy algebra problem. Right? So if you go to your calculator, once again, hit zoom 6. It'll take you back to the standard 10 by 10 graph. Okay? Then <clears throat> hit y equals, and just type it as, as you see it. Negative 1, parenthesis, x plus 1, close parenthesis, open the next, x minus 3, close parenthesis. Okay? And when you hit graph, hopefully it looks familiar. So here's mine. Oh, forgot to refresh it. So there's my graph. See, drum roll, please. Don't need a drum roll. How's it look? All the same. Cross that negative one, cross that three, goes up to one, two, three, four, goes up to four. Same thing. Well, my graph turned out upside down. <laughs> you know why it turned out upside down? Oh, wait, I didn't. Okay, because in the equation, remember we said the A controls the open up or open down, right? So if you look at your, if you go back to your Y equals, 
and your A is not negative, come here, look. If your A is not negative, then it's going to open which way? No, it is negative. It is negative? Yeah. Weird. I'll just come take a look at it then. Right? But if my A is not negative, then it won't, it won't open oh, the right way. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to delete, delete that real quick. Delete, delete, delete. Okay. Yeah, we'll do another one. So now I deleted my negative one. If I graph. Oh, never mind. I'll do another one. I'll put a negative instead of minus. Okay. If I graph, then it goes the other way. But the x intercepts are still the same. One and, or negative one and three. Okay, because I have x plus one and x minus three. Okay. Does that make sense? Are there any questions? Any questions?